Just before the end of the 19th century, one Pittsburgh engineer came up with the idea for the attraction that still bears his name, the Ferris wheel. You know, anytime you see a Ferris wheel, everybody goes, oh, look, it's a carnival, right? The first thing you see is the Ferris wheel. You can see the whole world. When you're, when you're, especially when you're little, and you're up at the top of a Ferris wheel, even a small one, that is an amazing change of viewpoint. We went to visit Ruth Ann Daly at her house. She's a columnist and crossword puzzle creator for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, who's written about Pittsburgh and its connections to the Ferris wheel. We also met and talked and walked with attorney Derwin Rushing, who studied the life and work of George Washington Gale Ferris. He was born in Galesburg, Illinois. Um, and moved to Pittsburgh uh, because Carnegie was making steel here. And he was a bridge builder, that is, uh, Ferris was, and he was already a uh, well-respected bridge builder. Derwin and his dog led us about three blocks through the Mexican War streets to the house on Arch Street, where Ferris lived for several years. The plaque on the front of the house tells you the wheel debuted in 1893. The French had just designed and built the Eiffel Tower. And that was to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. Chicago was having basically the Chicago World's Fair. And it was to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Columbus landing uh, on America. And they were looking for something to challenge the Eiffel Tower. But, but the Eiffel Tower just sits there, you know? <laughs> Ferris wheel went around. <laughs> it, it was tremendous. Ferris was 32 years old when he designed the wheel. Uh, he designed it in a uh, Chicago chop house, and he designed it on a napkin, and it went from napkin to reality in just about a year. There's always a napkin involved. <laughs> he used the same suspension ideas that they used on bridges in building the wheel. Also, he had to build it with an eye to taking it apart and being able to transport it, you know, a third of the way across the country by rail. Um, it was an architectural challenge. It was an engineering challenge. I could see him as an engineer really being challenged by that idea. You know, how can we get something almost a million pounds? And if we do it, how are we going to turn it? Well, you know, all of that was just enormous. It required uh, such engineering uh, feats to be leapt. Um, and he did it. Some Pittsburgh engineers get formal invitations to be in Chicago for the inaugural ride on June 21st, 1893, at 3 o'clock p.m. The Ferris wheel is born. It's 264 feet tall, uh, and the axle itself was the largest single piece of steel made at that time, and it was 10 tons. There were 36 cars, they were glass enclosed. They could accommodate 60 people, 40 people setting, 20 people standing. So over 2,100 people would be in Ferris's wheel. Yeah, they were like huge cages suspended people took picnics up in, up in them and, and wasn't there a champagne toast? I think I remember reading from the original uh, newspaper stories about this monstrosity that Ferris had unveiled at the fair. Uh, it would take 10 minutes to make one revolution and a ride was, was two revolutions. It charged them 50 cents per the, to ride in, in the Ferris wheel but one and a half million people rode on the Ferris wheel in the six months that it was spinning around at the, uh, the Chicago Exposition. It did take the world by storm. I mean, that was a huge news-making event. And I think part of it was because that's before the Wright brothers had taken flight at Kitty Hawk yet, so people hadn't ever been that high. Uh, they're up, you know, 264 feet. They're on top of the, the city of Chicago. They're, they've got Lake Michigan right to the east. I mean, it must have been a beautiful sight. And certainly for that time and that place, it was really uh, heights that people had never been, quite literally. After the fair, the wheel was sold and dismantled, then moved to St. Louis for a while. But things had fallen apart for Ferris. Uh, Ferris's bridge company went broke. Uh, he returned to Pittsburgh. His wife left him. Um, his house was foreclosed upon him. Um, he moved into the Hotel Duquesne in, in downtown Pittsburgh. And then he, he died fairly young and uh, alone, pretty miserable, I think. Ferris died at Mercy Hospital, apparently of typhoid fever, age 38. But his name is immortal because of the wheel. And maybe it's time for Pittsburgh to honor the man. Being an outsider, being not a Pittsburgh native, as soon as I learned that such an historical person uh, was from here, my first thought was, why is there not a Ferris wheel here then, too? Um, 
I would expect um, Pittsburgh to claim its own heritage. And at the time that I was finding out about this, the world was headed toward the millennial celebration. And so London and Paris both were getting Ferris wheels. And we don't have one, it's, it's ours. Thank you very much. And, and as someone who, um, coming in from the outside, thinks that Pittsburgh is magnificent, I couldn't understand why that pride hadn't forced us already to, to erect one um, as a permanent celebration of the genius that has historically been centered here.